Alright, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing particles. Alright, so I got a few particles here that we're going to show you at the end, or as we're talking about it. But first, let's actually talk about how to make particles. Now, we have a full article that covers the full details of the particles, but let's just talk about the basics. So, to create a particle, we right click on our world. Um, we go straight to the particle system and press particles. So now we just spawn it right in front of us. And now we have a particle system that just shoots particles all over the uh, place. All right, so how does particles work? Now there's a few properties. Periodic updates only are important when you have like a thousand particles in one area. Right now they're not, so I'm just gonna remove it. And we're just gonna be focusing on a few of these settings. Now, the first thing you're gonna see is the particles are white and dotty, and they're just spreading all over the place. So the first thing we're gonna do is we should know how to enable and disable it, and that's just by this button. And we have clear on enables, so every type is uh, reinitialized or uh, Basically, when you do this, will it continue or will it create new ones? Right? So that's the simple clear on enable. Emitter sync only works if you have like a child or like it's a child of another particle. So when that particle is enabled or disabled, this follows the same way. Now, the main uh, properties are the shapes, the size, and the types. So let's go into shapes. Shapes are basically where the um, the particle comes out from. If it's a point, it comes out from a single point. If it's a sphere, it comes out from the circle area. And I think it's better visualizable if I just remove no velocity and just show it. So right now we have about 20 particles all spawning in our little um, point. Now if we zoom out and we choose the sphere and we say an area radius of Two, and let's just increase that spawn rate to like 100, two of those, we can see that it is a circle. So our object or our particle is spawning in a circle or in a sphere. A cylinder is a cylinder as by its name. So if we just do like a two by five, that's two width to a five height. All right. And then a box is, of course, a box being a little bit more constrained. Uh, we can choose our length, width, and height. And then we also have random, which right now it doesn't make sense. But, uh, for example, if we have a mesh, so let's just right click and create a box, 4x4x4, four by four by four, and I'm just going to create it right here. And I'm going to make this a child, or the particle, the child of this box. You will notice that the particles are now spawning on the surface of the uh, mesh and that is what random does it spawns on the surface of the mesh then we also have something called spark now spark is more of a trigger object so what happens is when you have a trigger on when any of the other ones or the other shapes that we have spark will respond and it will create it. now i will show you an example of that but right now it's going to take too long all right so with all that done let's go back here let's go back to the point now we have our little point sphere. All right, now we also have different types of particles. Billboard and points particles are the ones where it looks at you into the screen. The difference is billboard takes in the screen space differences while point just takes the average space and keeps it that way. All right, flat on the other hand is mostly for meshes or like on the floor flat. So you can see it straight up. All right, length is when we're moving this object. So in our case, when we give it a velocity, like we did before, we also have this setting, which is the length. So if we increase it and thin it, it's going to basically stretch in the direction of the velocity that it's been given to. So that's the length's main purpose. So we can use that for like simulating rainfall or lasers or something. Then we also have random particles, which basically just spawns random of all the ones that we just talked about too. 
Now, the last two route and chain protocols, I am not too confident in seeing it in most places, nor am I confident in talking about it, so I will rather skip it. But they're basically meant for if you have something moving and you have the emitter shift, which we will enable now just to show. When you have them both, uh, emitter shift, emitter continuous, and if you have the route or the chain particles, what it'll do is it'll create a pathway as you move the object. So in our case, when we move the object, it's creating um, the object move alongside it. So it kind of looks like a fog for the chain. Now for the route, it's going to be the same, except the route is more flat based. Now this is perfect if you have something that's moving across waters. So this is much more important. Um, but that's about it for the type. So we're going to just gonna go back to our point and billboard and we're going to remove the emitter shift. Emitter shift basically what it does is it only generates when it's moving and continuous gives it a little bit more uh, uh, continuous particles. So let's just say if we have it as emitter shift and we just do it, you can see that there's a difference where the objects don't follow the particles. They are mostly just spawned there. So kind of like uh, when you uh, throw something in the air as you're gliding and it just stays there. Now if we have a continuous, it also follows the line. You'll see more difference of it when you actually have higher movement speed. Tech texture Atlas is mostly if you have uh, objects like this. For example, this picture over here, we have a picture of 16 different types of uh, glowy star stuff, and they're all different. It's not an animation. It's actually just 16 different pictures. And what we can do is we can spawn different types of them as we are uh, doing it. So I'm going to show that later. Random flip X and Y, that determines with the image. Then we have warmings and spawn rates and all this. So this is the more important part. Warming on start, basically when you begin the when you begin the emitter, how long it takes to actually start it. Spawn rate and spawn numbers are basically your uh, amount of what do we call particles per uh, half a second normally, because of lifetime is half a second for some reason. And there you go. So we have a spawn rate, how many times and how many spawns we can have. All right, then we have a threshold. This is basically for when you have to use uh, sparks or something, which determines what to do. We're going to talk about that later. And then limit per spawn is how many can you actually have per spawn. Then the main ones are your lifetime in second, how long the particle lasts, delay, how long it takes, uh, till it goes to the next spawn. The period is how long the spawn lasts. And then the duration is normally infinite, which means that there is a period, how long a period is. Like it's, it's a little confusing, but once you, uh, once you actually play around with it, you will understand it a lot more. And then you got the plus minus, which is basically plus minus that many seconds plus a few milliseconds and everything. And these are all just more highly playable, uh, what do we call it, the parameters that you can experiment with. Now the next thing we got is actually behavior after mission. So after it's been created, what do we do? Now we have the depth sort. Uh, this is basically if you have blendings. So we're going to talk about it once we get our uh, surface material. And I'm going to uh, go back up to it to talk about it. And then emitter base, which is basically if it's a uh, chain or if it's that or if it's a uh, emitter shift. All right. So the next thing is are these uh, settings. Position basically is if, it, if on the point there's a specific position you want to spawn it ex instead of where it's actually supposed to be, then you choose that point. So let's say if I actually wanted to position it two points or two units away on the x-axis. So it's going to be positioned on two units away from the x-axis. So that's just the, the displacement. Gravity is the natural amount of force that's act acting on the particle. So let's say if we had no velocity 
and we had a minus 2 gravity, so it's just going to be falling down at 2 meters per second squared. Right? Or if you had something like, uh, let's just say 2, it's just going to automatically just move in the y direction. So this is your natural gravity. Direction is the movement of the particle between a minimum and maximum of that axis when velocity is uh, affected. So if we had something like, let's say, 0, 0, we'll keep this minus 1, 0, 0, 0, and then we set the velocity is like 5, then it's only going to be attacking or only, only going to be affected on the minus 1 uh, z direction. Linear damping is basically uh, slowing down as it moves. So we got that stuff covered. The angle and rotation speed works when we have pictures, so you can see that later. Radius is the size of the object, and then increase in radius is how big it gets after it spawns. So let's just make it small for now. So as you can see, it's that small, and it's slowly getting bigger. Now you can also make it a minus, so it gets smaller. So let's just say it's this big, and we just say minus 1. So now it creates, and it turns smaller. So there's a lot of... Uh, experimentation that. Interactions, we don't have to look too much into it other than the fact that if you do want an intersection or if you want it to behave with the laws of physics, then you gotta in um, then you gotta enable collisions and intersections and if you want it destroyed when it hits something, then destruction. And mostly these are parameters that play with it. So let's say if it hits the floor and it uh, bounces off how bouncy it is gonna be or how rough it is and what's the weight of it. And then rendering to texture, we're going to talk about this later. And the rest of these, actually, we will talk about this later. This is more advanced. Right now, it's just the basics. Now, let's go into materials. So this is a little bit more, um, I guess, next step, you could say. So we're going to have a material of 0. And I'm just going to go back over here and just make it uh, 1, 1, and then lifetime of 1. So now we only have one per period per cycle. Sweet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a sphere and just two. And I'm just going to... So now we can see different points. And we're just going to make, uh, let's see, uh, probably 10 is good enough. So now we have 10 different points spawning randomly in a sphere. All right, so now that we have that, let's go into the particles. Let's create a particle, and I'm going to be using this one, which has different particles to show you the differences. So the first difference we're going to have is actually, let's add the albedo. So we just drag the albedo inside here, and now you can see there's like all 16 of them done. Now the next thing we're going to do is add the normal map. If you don't know how to make the normal map, it's very easy. We just, let's, let me delete it. It's literally just click on this, right click, and either clone or copy and paste. And once you do that, just drag the pasted one into the normals. It's going to ask you for the map presets. We do that, and that's it. So now it's a normal map preset. Okay, going back here. Now, as you can see, it's a 4x4. Four four. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on animation. And we're going to say 4x4. Four now, what this does is it plays all 16 of them as animations. Now, this would be good if it was actually an animation, but in our case, they're all for different types of um, sparkles. So what we can do, actually, is we can go back up here, and we can go into that texture atlas that I was talking about, and we can make it a 4x4. Four four. So now every little particle is going to be one of the 16 choices that we have. So that makes it a little bit easier. Now we can also flip its y and x, so now we can have like the particle flipped around. Cool. Now the next thing we were talking about that I skipped was, let's go down here, Death Sword and Emitter Based. Now Emitter Based is useless right now because we're not doing any kind of continuous emitting, so we're going to leave that. We're going to keep the Death Sword. The next thing we're going to do is the Angle. Now, if this was a 0 by 0, the uh, the positions will always be the exact same. As you can see, when we focus on, let's just mute it, when we focus on a few of them, they're always going to be in the exact same position as they are. 
But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to keep that angle minus 180 to 180. So each one is different. And then rotation speed is movement along its axis. Now we can choose a specific rotation speed. I'm just going to choose 90. And it's going to start rotating 90 degrees. So it makes it look a little bit cooler. All right. Then we have the radius, which I talked about. We're going to keep it as a 0.6. And then minus 0.6. So now it gets smaller. Looks a little bit cooler, right? I guess. Okay, the next thing we're going to actually test is the collisions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Pause this for a second. I'm going to make the lifetime infinite. So INF, infinite, perfection. I'm going to make the gravity minus 2. Alright? And then I'm going to go down here to the uh, interaction. And we can choose from the ground whether we want a collision or physics. I enable both of them. So in our case, I'll show you both of them. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the uh, physics intersection. So when we play it, they're pretty heavy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that decrease in a radius. So now when we see it, it has a little uh, bounce. And then if we remove the restitution, they just roll on it. If we wanted to still stay alive, we should definitely uh, keep a certain lifetime after a few seconds it should die out or destroy in collision. The moment it hits our uh, object, it collides. Alright, so now with the inter interactions, as you can see, it's dying on the moment we touch our floor. Alright, so we got the basics of our um, particles. Now we can actually check it out with all these guys that I've created right here. Alright, so those that's the beginning of particles, and I will send you guys all of this on my hard drive, or not hard drive, on my Google Drive. You guys can look it up, understand it, create your own, maybe even make better than mine, definitely make better than mine. And yeah, that's about it. I will see you guys later. Alright, goodbye. Oh.